Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain, where it's been raining, hailing, windy, thunderstorms, lightning. It's been a fun couple of days. Uh, during that time, uh, the uh, synthesizer boards from uh, Elecraft have arrived. I'm going to install them in one of the transceivers. Um, the reason for doing that is a slight improvement in performance. Yeah. According to Sherwood Engineering, uh, get slightly greater dynamic range. So we'll we'll uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll leave Sherwood Engineering uh, to be the uh, the go-to site for whether or not these boards work. It's way beyond the scope of what I can do or test. Um, it supposedly makes an improvement, and I'm willing to do it. I'm so happy with the K3s. It's uh, an investment I'm willing to make. To do the upgrade, uh, Elecraft requires or recommends a uh, electrostatic mat. There's a whole page of detail on how to do that and what you should get. You don't want to ruin these boards, they're just too expensive. Um, diagonal side cutters, um, needle nose pliers, and probably the most important tool is going to be this, and, and that's a number one, not a number two, and not a zero, but a number one uh, Phillips screwdriver. I've, um, well, I've, well, I've lost it. Oh, here it is. Um, I've magnetized the tip using these neodymium magnets, which are really powerful. I'm also going to use these magnets to hang on to the screws. Uh, they're not stainless steel screws, so they'll stick to this. And uh, I don't want to have to buy more flathead screws, and there's going to be some in the top and other screws from the inside. So these will. Uh, I'll put the screws onto here for now. Why did I magnetize the end of it? Well, if I drop something, I can maybe fish it out with the screwdriver. If I need something longer on uh, on my website, uh, I sell a uh, gooseneck with a magnet on the end of it, and I get one of those out of inventory and, and fish it down. Hopefully, <laughs> if I'm lucky, I won't need that. Anyway, those, uh, those magnets are really powerful. Um, Read and follow the instructions. Try not to deviate from them. If you don't understand, give Elecraft a call. They have the best tech support uh, in the world. They're just great. Um, what's interesting is that they can add things to these transceivers, and somehow they planned ahead to do that, and how they've worked all that out over a time frame of years, I, I don't know. It is beyond the scope of what I'm going to do as to whether or not these boards provide an increase in performance. I'll leave that to Sherwood Engineering. That guy knows more about receivers than I'll ever know. And uh, you can look on the website and see whether or not it makes sense to you. Uh, in some cases, there's like a 6 dB increase in performance uh, in dynamic range. 6 dB is significant in my view because that's four times. And um, it's probably going to be worth it. Anyway, I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to start the camera. I'm going to break the video into two sections. Uh, first one will be um, removing the, uh, the existing boards. To do that, you have to remove the top cover and then a couple of screws and take the boards out. Then the second video will be to put the boards in using a couple of screws, put the top cover on, uh, run some tests, uh, Elecraft has some firmware, or you need. You should do the update if you haven't done a recent update on your K3. If you're going to do this, uh, do the update first. Um, then when you run uh, the firmware, there's a process you can check the boards to see whether or not they're functioning as they should. If all goes okay, it smiles and says, synthesizer, okay. If it doesn't say okay, well, <laughs> I don't know what you do then. Anyway. Take a break here. I'm going to go over to the work table and install these things and see what happens and try to find out why Alicraft told me it's going to take an hour and a half. Looks like it should take a half an hour. Anyway, off to uh, to doing that. See ya. Okay, here we go. I haven't opened up my K3 more than a few times and uh, it always troubles me just a bit because there's so much going on on the inside. Now this is a K3 that I built but it's been a lot of years ago. Um, I'm attaching a magnet to a, uh, the, a rear lens cap. I'm going to use that to hold the screws. Sorry about my head being in the way. Um, the screws are 440 flathead screws. Uh, 
they can be gotten they're uh, black oxide but you don't want to have to go to the trouble of getting spares uh, at least after the fact anyway so as I read the instruction instructions I thought it said there were eight screws that hold the cover on well in fact there are nine um, basically the screws that you can see in the lid except for the four, four screws around the speaker are removed and then there's one more that I missed and that's in the middle rear and it connects sort of a tab on that cover with the uh, uh, the rear panel anyway one by one I'm re removing the screws being extra careful not to strip the head of the screw so if it doesn't turn uh, with relatively gentle pressure uh, let that screw go and come back to it because you just don't want to in no circumstance do you want to destroy that screw uh, it would be a real booger if you uh, stripped out the uh, the Phillips head all right I'm at this point thinking I've got enough of the screws removed to go inside and here's what happens uh, I'm basically next going to put the rig on its side and hope the cover comes off because you've got to get to the speaker and it won't come off and the reason for that becomes pretty apparent about now that I've left a screw in place and that screws in the middle rear uh, not the two in the corners Removing the speaker is a, uh, a bit tricky, but not bad. Uh, it has a short lead on it. It's, um, that lead has a uh, <coughs> modular type plug, and it's plugged into the inside of the K3. So you have to reach in and pull that plug. And what, once that's pulled out, then the, um, the top cover is uh, by itself, and you can... Um, didn't get into the K3. The two boards in my K3 that need to be replaced are mar mounted against uh, uh, towards the front. They're easily seen. Excuse me, they're, they're approximately four inches by four inches by about um, well, less than a half an inch thick, maybe three eighths of an inch thick. And they're held in place with just two screws, which again was something I wasn't sure of and I resorted to the instructions a couple of times here. I'll take a break and turn off the camera and reread the instructions. So there's one screw in each corner so each board has two screws uh, in my case because I have a sub receiver there's a second board if you had if your K3 has one receiver only then there's just the one board more towards the middle and it's held in place by two screws uh, I've turned the rig on its side because I've finally figured out a way to loosen those two screws and I'm using the number one screwdriver and gently but forcefully turning those screws and each of the screws had two washers on it from when I assembled it and to try to grab those two screws with pliers or something else I knew I couldn't do it so I used a large magnet a neodymium magnet and that was to get the screws and the uh, the washers as it came off uh, in one of the cases I was able to turn the screw with my fingers in the other case I had to use the, uh, the screwdriver um, but again, there's just, if you've got two boards, there are just four of those screws. If you have just one board, then there's just the two screws. It was one of the tougher things to do. I probably spent 15, 20 minutes just getting those screws out, um, making sure not to damage anything else along the way. But uh, the rig is on a uh, anti-static mat. I'm wearing a, uh, a straight any stack but just electricity off of the uh, off the K3 
And I'm to the point where I'm going to uh, pull the first circuit board out. And I'm trying to pull straight up, and I'm, then I'm trying to wiggle it side to side, front to back, and um, nothing seems to be working. So I go back to the instructions again, take another look. Um, I was concerned there was something else holding the boards in place, and there are some cables on them that have to come off, but even with those cables off, I still couldn't, uh, I still couldn't pull the darn circuit board up. Now here I was back to pulling the two screws to hold the um, the sub receiver board, and um, instead of having it on its side, I I had it sitting upright. And this turns out to be a mistake because one of the washers does fall into the uh, into the transceiver despite having the really strong magnet there. The one thing that I did with that screwdriver, which paid off right here, was I magnetized the end of it with the uh, neodymium magnet, and I. When the washer came off, I was thinking, well, how am I going to get that darn washer off? Like, fortunately, I could see it. Um, it was easily gotten to, but not with needle. I didn't want to dig into the rig with needle nose pliers. So, what you'll see in a second is I reach in with the um, tip of the small screwdriver, and I'm able to grab that, uh, that washer that's laying on the circuit board and take it out. And this is where I've dropped the, the, uh, the washer. And I stick the screwdriver in and it picks up the washer right away and boom, I'm done. So, I'm back to wiggling out the two boards, or trying to get them out. And uh, um, again, pulling the cables is needed. Uh, one of the things that's suggested is that the cables can be pulled with using the... Uh, needle nose pliers holding on to the to the plug. It's a coaxial type plug, kind of like an old Motorola, and I've forgotten the number for it or the nomenclature for it, but they're really tight. It's a crimp connector, and it's not easily pulled from the socket. And I'll get my balding head out of the way here in a second. Again, I'm pulling up, looking at it, trying to figure out what the heck. And then all of a sudden, it just comes right out. And I could see there was nothing else holding it in place. So I go back to the sub-receiver. And again, I'm jiggling it or rocking it from side to side. <clears throat> Not very far, just enough to kind of walk it up. And this one has an extra cable connected to it, uh, a little bit lower than the uh, than the first one. So I had to get in and uh, pull that pull that cord, and that took a bit of effort. And again, you, you don't want to damage anything. I know these boards are going to go away, but still, um, I don't want to break anything. I don't want to hurt the other end of the cable. Uh, I don't want to damage the cable for that matter either. And actually, it took several minutes to do it. I've cut cut some of that time out, but it still uh, uh, shows you how difficult it was to pull uh, to pull that cable. The uh, connectors on the board are labeled um, with a J, 